in this video I'm going to be talking about motion especially with air resistance okay so this is really the, the thing that we're going to be tackling today okay so suppose has has some sort of mass over here and I'm going to throw it straight up okay so in these questions I'm just going to be throwing straight up uh, and then we'll be answering some questions so let's go ahead so we know that there is a downward force caused by gravity of course right so there's a downward acceleration uh, called G but this time there is also going to be a air resistance right so air resistance means that it's going to be acting downwards as well so the question is what is this force so to begin with let me start off by saying force is equal to ma so mass times acceleration but again keep in mind that I'm only talking about uh, force in the upward direction okay so my ma mass times acceleration is going to be equal to minus mg note that I said minus because uh, gravity is acting downwards and air resistance is going to be minus m times velocity squared okay so I'm telling you right now that the acceleration is uh, mass times velocity squared it doesn't necessarily have to be this the case right but most of the time this is what is defined to be so the faster you're going the higher the resistance is going to be and of course it's always against the direction of emotion okay so uh, let's just say instead of a let's go y double dot okay so in the direction of y the acceleration is equal to minus g minus v squared so all that was get rid of the mass okay now the question the first question that I have is how long does it take to get to the top okay so what what what, what is the time equal to by the time you reach the reach the top just before it drops down okay and the second question is uh, how far has it gone up okay so what is uh, sorry not x what is y equal to at this point all the way up here okay so that's we need to find out what's what's going on over here and you know in order to answer that question uh, we're going to write well to answer the first question I'm going to write my acceleration as this so dv dt is equal to minus g minus b squared before I go ahead and integrate this uh, this question you need to you need to remember that uh, what the conditions are so at the top I hope you understand that the velocity is equal to zero right so at the top just before it drops down it's it's still okay it stays there and then it drops down so because of that at this point in time velocity is zero so that's really going to be the crucial thing for us to solve this question okay let's go ahead so I'm going to bring all the uh, the t variables onto one side which means I had to bring the dt over there and I need to bring the all all the variables with velocity over to this side okay and to do that this is what's going to happen so dv on uh, g plus v squared is going to be equal to minus so I'm going to leave the minus over here uh, minus times dt and now I'm going to integrate both sides okay so um, at a certain, a certain time t uh, the velocity is v right so th th this is just for me to avoid doing um, avoid putting the uh, what, what do you call it the limits okay so I don't need to find the constant plus c at the end if I do it this method so at a certain time t the velocity is v at t equals zero okay so I probably should should have mentioned that it starts off with, with the velocity of u okay so at t equals zero the velocity is u okay so uh, how do we go, go ahead and integrate this one so this side is fairly straightforward it's just going to be equal to minus t right with the limits of course but this side over here it's going to be uh, tan inverse okay so this is actually one of the known in integrals uh, so you can look it up if you want but it's going to be tan inverse of velocity on square root of g and outside it's going to be one on square root of g and just on the side I'll just write this down so if I, if I was to integrate uh, 1 on a squared plus x squared dx is equal to 1 on a tan inverse of okay I'm running out of space but it will be tan inverse of x on a okay so that's really what I've written over here so I need that's why I need to take the square root of g 
and then put in your limits with v and u and then on this side it's going to be minus t with limits t and 0 so the 0 isn't really going to play a part in this, this question so I have uh, t is equal to so I'm going to take the minus onto the other side and I will write minus 1 on root g uh, well I should do the 1 on root g outside as well and inside the brackets it, it will be tan inverse of minus tan inverse of v on root g minus tan inverse of u on root g okay so now we, we need to take into consideration consideration this fact the fact that the velocity is zero at the top okay so the fact that the velocity is equal to z at the top uh, means that this term over here can disappear okay so this term will go to zero so I will end up with that that time is equal to 1 on root g so that the two minuses over here and over here cancel cancel each other out so it will be tan inverse of uh, u on root g okay so that's how long it takes to for you to reach the top okay the second question so the second question is asking uh, how far has it gone up okay so again we're going to use a similar uh, similar theory so this time I have uh, so I'm going to be using for some always going to be using this thing uh, the, the fact that the acceleration is minus g minus b squared but this time so I'll just rewrite it over here just for convenience sake minus g minus b squared but this time I'm going to be using this this interval instead so instead of writing acceleration as uh, change in velocity over time I'm going to be writing writing this thing so this is actually again a known uh, form of writing acceleration so you can write as dv dt if you want or you can write as v dv dx there's actually um, another term which is popular which is half dv squared dx okay so there's there's quite a few ways of writing acceleration um, but in this case this is the one that's going to help us okay dv dt is definitely not going to help us because it has a t in there okay so we don't want anything to do with time we want just x against velocity so that's why i'm using in this case okay and again i will write as minus g uh, and in brackets sorry g plus v squared okay so to integrate this before we integrate it so we have v db on g plus v squared is equal to minus dx and then we integrate both sides so at x equals x, velocity is velocity. At x equals zero, the velocity is u. Okay, so when we start off, uh, the velocity is u, the initial velocity. Okay, now you should realize that this is going to be a log function because if I if I differentiate v squared, I should end up with two v, right? So I'm going to put a two over there, but because I I introduce a two, I'm going to multiply by a half in the front. Okay, so the reason I'm doing that is because I can get half log in brackets g plus v squared. And then the limits are going to be, as mentioned, and over here it's just going to be minus x. I'm not going to bother with the zero because it's minus zero, okay? Okay, um, so I end up with half log of inside g plus v squared. Now, you can write minus log of g plus plus u squared but remember keeping in mind your log rules you can write this right g plus u squared all in squared all inside is equal to minus x so the question was what what was the um, how far did it go up and to answer that question all you need to set is this number over here is going to be zero right so the velocity is zero so you will end up with x is equal to minus a half log of g on g plus u squared and of course this minus over here uh, can become a power right so it can become the power of your log so you can rewrite this as going half log g plus u squared on g okay so that's that's it that I have for now um, now if you have any questions or comments please let me know um, I hope I gave you enough knowledge to do a similar question like this so 
Thanks for watching.